Well, finally, now we're gonna see the class for Kennedy. In this case, I'm gonna show you three different scenarios. So the first scenario in a class four is when you just lose the anterior teeth. So as long as we keep the canines, this small area that we're replacing, just four anterior teeth, we can consider this as a tooth segmented area with virtually no fulcrum. So typically the clasps that we use, in this case is the maxilla, which is an embrasure clasp, embrasure clasp. Then we have, uh, always remember, guiding planes next to saddle area. So a guiding plane, guiding plane, we're gonna put the guide plate, guide plate. And then we, go, we put our rests on the canines, minor connectors, join the major connector, in this case, an anterior posterior strap, palatal strap. That's how it works in this case, as long as you have just, as long as you keep your canines, okay? This is one scenario. What happens when you start losing the canines? So, when you start losing your canines, in one side, what happens is that this class four turns into an anterior extension RPD. So, in other words, we're saying that this is becoming a saddle area that is gonna change our mechanics. So we have to treat it as if this portion would be like a class one or a class two saddle area. Okay, so again, we can use our embrasure clasps, embrasure clasps, and then let's see what happens in this case. We have the canine. In this case, you can put either a clasp here or just uh, your guide plate, your guide plate and your rest would do, okay? But what happens in this case, where you lost your canine, and we're in this case the first premolar, we're in the second premolar. So next to saddle area, guide plate, this is my guiding plane. Good, we're using the same uh, anterior posterior palatal strap. And then we come this area and we say, okay, we need to put clasp here but now mechanics are important so we have to treat this as an as a free end saddle area so what does it mean that we have it like this so if this is a class one in this case a saddle area I need a clasp in the saddle in the saddle area so you already know in the abutment next to the saddle area we have class one and class two, which are your options. So in this case, I'm choosing um, an RPI. So an RPI, the missile rest, this is a guiding plane or the guiding the, the guide plate next to the saddle area and the eye bar clasp. So why am I putting it like this? Because I want you to see it like this. This portion, I want you to see it like this so that you can draw it and we cover this portion I want you to see it like this this is what I want to draw here this is what I want to design so saddle area my guide plate working as my guiding plane and then I know I need a measure rest so a measure rest minor connector goes there and I bar. There we go. And now you can again go back and turn it again. That's your design. And it's working mechanically perfect. Now, if you see carefully, I didn't put the reciprocating arm here. You're asking like, why? Why you put it here and not here? Because of this minor connector so closed to the other minor connector, this portion works enough as a reciprocating arm, so there's no need for me to put another one here. It's extra wire for no purpose, mechanically. 
So, but I, I keep the retentive farm here. Okay, so this is the second scenario. So what happens? Ah, and in the first scenario, you can choose depending on the occlusal contacts where you can put your, your embrasure clasp. Either you can put it here or you can put it here between the premolar and the molars. Like this, like that, or here, here, okay? Good. Finally, in the third case, just showing you that now we lost both canines and it's the same. So as the saddle area increases in the interior, we're still like worrying more about the mechanics. So when you see this and we talk like virtually no fulcrum, we still have like certain fulcrum here, but the, the amount of force that we receive in the interior teeth is minimal. And the posterior teeth, you know, those are molars strong so they will not and the the forces they will that they will receive are vertically mostly so mechanically it would not in, in during function it will not damage uh, this abutment teeth so it will work even though the full chrome minimum it, it wouldn't it won't disengage okay so you will find also in the books that saying you can uh, just uh, use the reciprocating arms and you can just do not draw the, re the retentive arms here or you can draw them and just put them on top of the survey line of the survey line so it means that it has it doesn't go in into an undercut so they're just there just to help in uh, to stabilize the pro the the rpd that's it and finally so again the same case so I would recommend that you use uh, a, a, a palatal plate whenever you start losing your canines, both canines. Whenever you start losing both canines, just go with a palatal plate because you need like more support, more area to support, okay, and to distribute the forces in a better and uniform way. So here again, we do the same principle. We go this, we see that we have two saddle areas here. See again this, we want to replicate it here. So, initial rest, guide plate, that's a guiding plane, eye bar. Same here, guide plate, it's guiding plane, eye bar, and we already put the initial, the initial rest, we turn it around. It's gonna disengage when it works. Protected, protecting the abutment teeth. Okay? And now again, you can see that we're so close to the embrasure clasp that there's no need for me to put a reciprocating arm because it works perfectly here and here. So this is the, the variation of the class four. Just the mechanics, that's why we call the mechanics are reversed in a class four Kennedy because of this. This is the consideration that you have uh, to take into account when you're designing a class four. The amount of teeth that you start losing and how to protect the abutment teeth and the mechanics.